Okay, so the reason I wanted to revisit this whole issue and uh, actually uploaded some video a video about this whole thing is because of this particular video, which kind of put a pit at my made me uh, kind of gave me a sinking feeling in my stomach when I saw this uh, girl from SciShow just confidently and authoritatively uh, state that there's absolutely nothing what whatsoever to worry about about Yellowstone and all the geologists say there's nothing going to happen and it's not going to happen like at any time whatsoever and don't worry about it and it says but as it turns out volcanologists aren't too worried about it that's not the truth okay that's her name Olivia Gordon they either are lying through a mission or they haven't done any actual research on the subject because they're pretty fucking concerned um, even such to the point that they enlisted the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, otherwise known as NASA, of all people. I don't know why the U.S. the U.S. Geological Survey or USGS actually got NASA involved, but they got these guys, you know, the eggheads at NASA, basically to theorize um, a last-ditch, desperate means of averting a super volcanic eruption at Yellowstone National Park by literally dry, drilling into the side of the caldera out, just outside of Yellowstone National Park's borders, okay, drilling a hole down into that and then running a heat exchanger through the, <laughs> through the freaking hole that they bored and running water through it to eventually um, cool the crust such to the point that they would hopefully mitigate the possibility of an eruption in Yellowstone National Park. I guess, like maybe a hundred, like somewhere beyond their lifetimes. They, I forget where it says in here. This is also very, con yeah. This is controversial because it costs money and they'll require a lot of water, and it probably won't happen anywhere in their lifetimes so that it would even be effective if it is at all effective. And there's also the possibility that, well, since we're drilling a freaking hole down into this giant magma plume, which spans three to four states. Let me show you. Here's magma plume. And as you can see, they have a, a super imposition here of what the states are. You know, here's Montana, Wyoming, Idaho. And just to give you an idea you know, of where this would be in relation, they also impose the same illustration down here. So the green is Yellowstone National Park. I guess the caldera is there outlined in red. And here's the giant magma plume. Yes, that's a big sucker, isn't it? It spans across Idaho. So the theory is is to drill somewhere around the somewhere from outside Yellowstone National Park's borders down into this thing, run heat exchanger, and somehow cool this monstrosity, or at least a good, you know, at least a layer. Uh, a part that's part of this monstrosity to such a point that it won't set off an eruption. That's completely unrealistic, unfortunately, but that's, I guess, the best that they could come up with at the time. And the reason why I say it's unrealistic is because of the fact that, well, it's so damn big that there are, in fact, convection currents, giant convective rolls between Yellowstone and the eastern Snake River Plain, which... This is the Snake River Plain, if you're uh, wondering. So you see this, like, this little flat area here, right here, this sort of thing. This is the Snake River right here going through. And this, like, plain here, that's what they're talking about. So there's a giant convective flow here that is constantly taking away the cold and pushing up and driving up the heat toward the surface because heat rises, cold sinks. So anything here, in any heat exchanger that they run here in uh, Wyoming would of course be negligible. It wouldn't really matter. Although there is a concerning risk that if they tried this crazy doomsday plan, which when they had to back away from it, when they pulled out of the idea, they just said, oh, well, haha, it's just a, it's a quote-unquote thought experiment. You know, when they pulled out of it, they call it a thought experiment. Um, you know, before they said that, they could potentially set the thing off because, yeah, you're piercing the crust and straight into that thing right there, that giant monstrosity of molten doom. Now, 
what I want to get into on top of that, because there is this giant doomsday plan here that was actually proposed, and that shows that, yes, of course, they are concerned. There is also an article that I have since been unable to uncover, which I had to go through archive.org to recover the thing. This was actually available last year in uh, June 2018 when I first shot my uh, video about this thing. And I decided not to upload the video because I'm like, nah, I don't want to come off as an alarmist and whatever. But, you know, I saw this. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, this is a total misrepresentation of what I've, you know, learned about of how the geologists feel about this whole thing. Now, eh. Actually, I'll just go through this PDF that I saved. Now, in that article, when Yellowstone explodes, that is, I keep on getting this access denied crap from. Every time I try and check this effing thing, it just gives me this error. So I don't know if they took it down or the link is broken or what, but it their server doesn't like me for right now, at the least. Now, what this talks about, this article here, is it talks about what would happen if Yellowstone exploded and the chances of what could happen if it does. Now, they have a they have interspersed in here bits of an interview that they did with Bob Christensen, who was the scientist, yep, as it says here, who pioneered research on the Yellowstone volcano in the 1960s. He's the one that discovered that this thing was not extinct. It was actually active. So he was you know, really the pioneer. He was the kind of you know, expert of uh, one of the main one of the first real experts of Yellowstone's uh, activity and the hot spot. Now what they do talk about I'll, I'll you know leave you guys to you know check this thing out and look it up and whatnot. I'll leave a link in the uh, description of this video. But uh, there's some disturbing things in here. I'm not gonna I don't want to cause any alarm or any of that crap. Uh, that's not what I'm here for. But it does go over things about, like, the past, I don't know, maybe 40, like, 20, 40 years or something, like 30, 40 years, that there have been earthquake swarms. The caldera, portions of the caldera have been surging upward at a rate of nearly three inches a year. So this thing's pretty active. Something's Something dynamic is occurring. It's not business as usual or... As what's her name again? Olivia Gordon? Is that what's her name? Yeah, Olivia Gordon, as she says, oh well it's just a Tuesday when you see this activity. No, it's not Tuesday. It's uh it's a work in progress that's been progressing slowly. And geologists are concerned, but they don't want to raise alarm because they don't want to on one hand, the geologists don't want to cry wolf and get everybody riled up and cause a false alarm and a lot of panic, a lot of um, loss of revenue because, of course, Wyoming gets a lot of money from Yellowstone and they don't want to displace people from their homes. Yet at the same time, they don't want to be responsible for a bunch of deaths because they, for, because they failed to sound the alarm when they could have. So that's the tightrope that geologists are walking and that's really the main reason behind why you have these contradicting uh, statements from all these different news articles of why they say oh if this thing went off hell would break loose but on the other hand they're also saying even a lot of times in the same articles they're saying but don't worry about it it this last super just remember super eruption hasn't happened for 640,000 to 650,000 years well, that was the last super eruption. Although this thing is doing some weird stuff. And don't ever listen to the crazy apocalypse crap. It's just a bunch of people that don't know what the hell to do with their lives. Um, but yeah, there are earthquake swarms and things that have been happening. And uh, yeah, I would definitely re recommend reading over this again. I mean, reading over this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah, they're saying it's not likely, whatever. But yeah, here's the, kind of the gist of the whole article. I think that the system is more or less equilibrated itself, says Christensen, which is what they're kind of hoping. But yeah, then he quickly adds, right? He quickly adds, but that's an interpretation that would not stand up in court. As you can see, 
that's the big thing liability don't want people don't want to be responsible for a whole bunch of people dying because an eruption occurred and they didn't sound the alarm so now moving on from that i want to kind of debunk something really really annoying which is that 640 650 mi- uh, million i mean 650,000 year ago super eruption statistic they keep on throwing out there to give you the idea give you the false impression that oh there hasn't been an, an eruption with this thing for 650,000 years no there hasn't been a, a super eruption has not happened for 650,000 years that is true an eruption however has happened long after that as early as you can see here, eruptive history of the Yellowstone hotspot. It's like freaking Wikipedia, right? Okay, Yellowstone hotspot in the Wapi lava field and Kingsville blowout. That occurred, give or take, you know, 200 and, yeah, 2,270 years ago, give or take 450 years. Okay, so only two and a quarter millennia ago. All right. That's not very long ago at all that there was an eruption from this thing. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so what's the significance of that? Well, the Wapi Lava Field, let me get here. Wapi Lava Field is right here, this little red splotch. Here's a zoom in, a, a zoomed in uh, view of it. And here's what they call the Great Rift Zone and all that stuff. Is Oh, this blue thing is Great Rift Zone. And that's, you know, just... Take in mind, just just to the east of the uh, middle of the state, right? Me, to the east, south uh, south side of the uh, Snake uh, River Basin. And now we take a look at the Snake River Basin. Go down here toward the middle, off to the east. Well, what do you know? At that area that erupted only 2,270 years ago, right here, has since... You know, like the last time the hot spot was directly over top of it was 10 to 7 million years ago. That's what these represent right here. These numbers represent when the hot spot was last there in terms of millions of years. So 16.1 million years ago is over here because the uh, the plane, the uh, plate here, the tectonic plate that, uh, you know, basically the western U.S. is located on. That's been moving out west, and as it's been moving out west, this hot spot, you know, which is what this is, this giant magna plume, magma plume, has been eh, relatively stationary, while the uh, crust, this tectonic plate, has been moving west. This thing, as you can see, has been, you know, you know there's a place been moving, it's been, uh, you could say, relativistically traveling up toward here. So... Even though this is like 10 to 7 million uh, years ago, the hot spot was last there, it erupted 2,270 years ago. Not very long at all. It's not 650,000 years ago, like a lot of people try and say about this thing, which is when it had a super eruption about here. Because 650,000 years ago, you know, 0. 0.6. 0. 0.65 would be you know, about that time. So around here was where the last super eruption took place. But hey, look, that's all rocky. Here's the Snake River Plain. And this is where we had our most recent eruption. Now, an issue with that is on top of the fact that it was much more recent, is if you take a look at the Yellowstone hot spot, the giant magma plume, which is what the hot spot is, this thing is pretty damn flat right it's not like the hot spot is just it's not like it's you know jaws or something where it's just uh you know just peaking above yellowstone and everywhere else it's just lower uh it's it's closer to the center of the earth than it is to the surface it's not like here around yellowstone is the only place that's close to the earth but rather it's it kind of looks like if you look here it kind of looks a little bit from this point at the edge of Yellowstone. It kind of looks like it's tapering off a little bit. I don't know if that's just the that's just the perception of this thing or what. I don't have an access. I don't have access to a 3D model, uh, unfortunately. From uh, is University of Utah that did this study. 
Um, let me see if I can get the page for you. Come on, man. My uh, page is, my web browser is a little slow. But if you uh, look up this uh, article here, Yellowstone's Plumbing Exposed, that's where the university first talked about it. Although you might want to do another um, search for this uh, illustration because unfortunately this original article has broken links, namely to that same photo. Because I checked this before I made the video and unfortunately the damn thing is broken. Page can't be found. University of Utah. Great. So yeah, I clicked this too. Same thing, same issue is broken. But uh, yeah, it is, it is the same exact illustration as yeah, what I saved here. Anyways, so the point I'm trying to make here is that this hot spot of where we last had this early eruption only two and a quarter millennia ago like the hot, the distance between the surface and the hot spot itself is about the same where that eruption took place as it kind of is around the caldera which is now rising i guess an average of three inches per year as of at least 2009 and that's that's the actual case of what's happening here scientists are nervous they don't know exactly what the hell's going on because while well, it's all underground and they're hoping for the best it might not erupt that is very true it might not erupt any time in our lifetime it might not erupt for thousands of years from now but at the same time it could erupt you know next week we don't know and i think that is yeah that was this article's kind of uh abstract it says a monstrous plume of hot rock uh it's molten rock uh it, it's not just hot as molten is causing the earth to heave and tremble past volcanoes have erupted with a thousand times the power of mount saint helens that's the six hundred fifty thousand year ago super eruption they're referencing and the future is anybody's guess that's basically what they know about when this thing might erupt so I just wanted to discuss that fact with people that it's not it's not true that there's absolutely nothing to worry about there is a lot of concern geologists are studying this closely but they don't want to cause major panic they don't want to cause a lot of disruption and displace people from their homes Yet at the same time, they don't want to be the people holding the bag when a bunch of, when the thing, spontane thing up and goes off. They don't want to be the person that failed to sound the alarm and a bunch of people died as a result. So that's what the actual dilemma is. And I wish people in positions of at least perceived authority like SciShow would have the decency to let people... Let the public know the actual truth of what's going on, that people can be trusted with the actual facts of what professionals are really going through, and that, yes, it's not a doomsday scenario that's going to happen like all the crazy preppers and stuff are, free, are screeching about, yet at the same time, it's also not a non-issue. It is an issue, and that is something that we should be aware of. And we should be letting on the conversation, to be completely honest, rather than just being kept in the dark. So I just wanted to kind of let these things, you know, let you, the public, in on uh, the actual situation of things. And the fact that, yes, the government and geologists are pretty concerned because who the hell would design, who would bring in NASA? Of all people, really, NASA? Like... Uh, the people that deal with space technology um, and to deal with the geotechnical issue uh, to hatch out a plan that could possibly set off a super volcano <laughs> you know that that sounds kind of desperate and crazy because it is desperate and crazy but for, of all I don't know what caused them what information caused them to freak like that but for some reason somebody thought that was a good idea to try and hatch something that's borderline suicidal so yeah i do suggest people look at this with a uh, closer set of eyes but also rationally not not lazily 
like some people want you to, but at the same time, not like some crazy doomsday prepper character. So yeah, uh, that's that's my two cents and what I wanted uh, you folks to know about. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I hope that kind of helped give people a better understanding of what's actually going on. That it's a it's a it's a tug of it's a tightrope uh, sort of act. It's a balancing act between not wanting to scare people yet not wanting to be responsible for a bunch of dead bodies. And for some reason, apparently, I guess either the scientific community or the government or God knows who uh, just doesn't believe that the people should be told the actual truth because I guess they consider them too panicky and animalistic or something. I don't really know what the hell the idea is behind keeping people in the dark. But yeah. Wow. Ooh, look at that. Look at all those links. Ooh, baby. Did all those links if they still couldn't find the ones that I found, huh? Hmm. Isn't that interesting? What about the crazy one from the BBC about the freaking doomsday plan? I don't see that one in here. All I see is USGS, Washington Post. I don't see that one. Okay, I, I might want to have to click through all these ones, but she does not bring that up. She, that's non, not in this whole 13 and a half minute video is anything about the doomsday thing brought up or the caldera rising like it is in here, you know, and any information, any, and the stuff that's being said here about the earthquake swarms. Although she does say, I, I don't want to drag this on, but I do now remember, she says somewhere toward the end that if things were happening, you'd see all kinds of activity like earthquake swarms and, I think like different colors or something being emitted. I forget through what means or whatever, but if you look here toward the end of this video, she'll be saying that. And I'm like, wait a minute, I think I remember <laughs> there being something about earthquake swarms or whatever. So, yeah. Have your team do a little more research, miss. Because, um, yeah, there were <laughs> earthquake swarms as late as 2008 with this article that mentions the earthquake swarms is 11 day 11 days long earthquake swarm began late in 2008 and this article was published in 2009 so there could easily be more i mean it's been you know 10 years and also i don't know if it's in this article or somewhere else that i read but there was a major um I think it was an earthquake in California, somewhere about this. It was somewhere along the San Andreas Fault, but the damn thing sent the thing sent shockwaves that were so strong that it triggered earthquakes all the way up as far north as Alaska. It was triggering seismic activity with this being um, measured in Alaska. I think maybe not earthquakes, or maybe it triggered secondaries. I forget, but there was some. There were some earthquakes that did occur in California that actually were being read as far north as Alaska. And of course that also, as you can imagine, did in fact go out to Yellowstone because hell, if it goes to Alaska, yeah, it did go to Yellowstone and it did, I don't know if it had any significant impact. I don't think it did, but that just goes to show that yes, there is activity in the area that is of a seismic, that is of a seismic nature. So, yeah. Thank you um, for staying tuned and watching this. And I hope you have a more informed understanding of a relatively indecisive sounding um, response from uh, the mainstream media. And uh, take care. Have a good day.